Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ed0626, and we are going into the second half, part two, of my ranking of Star Wars movies from worst to best, entirely based on my opinion. Don't get that. Uh, let's get that part straight. This is entirely based on my opinion. I mentioned in the last episode, I don't want to start a war in the comments section because, you know, some Star Wars... Uh, fanboys are obviously going to be upset that movies are ranked higher than others. This is just me ranking it based on how much enjoyment I get out of the film, how I feel about them as, you know, films that stand alone as opposed to, as well as, you know, films that work within the series. So, last episode, we discussed the first half, which is, I consider the worst uh, aspect, or not like the worst half of the uh, films. All Star Wars films. So, without further ado, I'm not gonna again. I'm not gonna go into detail about it because you can go back and watch the video, which you can see in the description and in the annotation above. But where I ranked the first half, it was Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, the Clone Wars animated film. Uh, episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. The Rise of Skywalker, and finally Solo: uh, A Star Wars Story. Now, without further ado, let's get into the second half, which I'm considering the best of the best. And as you can tell, I could, or I should say, as you could imagine, it was very difficult for me to rank certain films above others because it's just, it becomes a lot more difficult because you have to find reasons as to why you like these films above others. So let's get started, shall we? Coming up in this, uh, coming up first in the second half of the list, we have Rogue One. Now, this was the first of the, I guess you can say for lack of better terms, anthology films. Like, films that happen within the, like, stuff that happens within the Star Wars universe that still correlates to the story, but it's not considered its own episode. So, it is its own episode, but it's not considered an episode of the actual saga. Don't know why they just, Rogue One was the first one they decided to do this. And I, I don't fully understand why, but I, I kind of understand at the same time. It, it's really weird. This was like a really weird time for Star Wars because it was like Disney's next attempt of making a, no, a good Star Wars film. I think this was after The Force Awakens. In my opinion, it's a very enjoyable uh, single film to the series. It starts off pretty slow because there's a lot of backstory obviously because you're introduced to a lot of new characters in a really short amount of time so obviously they have to focus on the characters motives they have to focus on you know a lot of things like for instance Jin or so why is Jin so important to the story all of a sudden what makes her father this you know wanted man for the Empire and uh, why is Orson Krennic such a piece of shit towards him or whatever it's just it's crazy, you know, uh, Orson Krennic's, uh, or Krennic's uh, motives are also shown that he wants, you know, he, it's, to me, this is how I interpret it, he just wants respect for his project that he oversaw, that being the building of the Death Star, the first Death Star. And I kind of understand that, of course, we go to the planet of Jeddah to, again, explore Jin's past we also meet a couple of new guys, that droid, I forgot his name, uh, K2 or something like that. I don't remember the, the droid's name. He was like a snarky big motherfucker too. I wouldn't want to fuck with him in a fight as I'll explain later on. But, nonetheless, uh, Cassian again, I, I think I mentioned him, uh, was another character. He you know, works with the Rebellion and there's not too much we know about him. He, he's kind of there. He's just there doing his shit, you know, he's trying to, he, he obviously is in charge of Jin during this whole mission on Jeddah and throughout pretty much the entire movie, and it's, you don't know anything about him, and I know there's like a series that's going to be about him coming out soon, I don't know why it's a thing, but that's a different story for a different time, other than that, you know, he seems to be a very stale character up until about halfway, three quarters through the movie. And that kind of goes into my next point, where there's not a whole lot of character development. Yes, uh, most of it revolves around Jin. There's a, 
a couple of, like, obviously Cassian, I guess, kind of grows on you as the movie goes on, because he's obviously found something to fight for other than just, you know, being whatever the fuck he is to the film. He, uh, there's not a lot of character development with a couple other characters. Uh, I think his name was Shroot or something like that. I don't remember entirely. But he was like that Chinese Asian looking guy that, you know, was blind and was one with the Force and the Force was with him. And then you have his, uh, what I, I don't know his name, so I'm just going to call him the big homie with the gun. You know, he's got that massive machine gun and that armament thing in the back of him as a backpack. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of story between those guys. I'm not going to lie. And I kind of want to learn, like, as opposed to Cassian getting his own series, I think uh, Sharut and his big homie was, uh, they're far more interesting to me in terms of characters than, you know, Cassian is, in my honest opinion. Of course, Krennic, we know that his motives are, like I said, he just wants respect, and it seems like he's not really getting it from the higher-ups and even Vader, it seems, in the film, which I'll get to Vader in a few minutes. And then we finally get to the Battle of Scarif. And in my opinion, the Battle of Scarif is, to me, the most visually appealing uh, space battle and land battle of the Disney Star Wars era. It just it just is so good, man. It, it's a classic, you know, battle of, like, using guerrilla tactics and then... Just when all hope is about to be lost, you're kind of stuck there. It's just you. All of a sudden, you also have um, your your boys, your, the fleet come in, and then this epic space battle ensues. It's a really great fucking part of the movie that I love. Like the, the that last half hour, forty five minutes of that film was just fucking awesome. And of course, I forgot one of the other guys. The uh, what was his name? The pilot, uh, like Bodhi or some shit like that. I don't remember exactly what his name was, but he was like a pilot that was sort of tagged along with the group because they needed him for some information. He even got, like, a really great death, because obviously in the Battle of Scarif, pretty much all, if not most, most if not all, of the, uh, of the rebels in that battle die. And Bodhi, I'll just call him that, he, uh, he had a really great death because he was kind of like one of those, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He, he's kind of like one of those sniveling little pussies that you see, and then all of a sudden he grows his balls, and just as he grows his balls, he dies. I was like, ah, oh, shit, they did my boy dirty. Anyway, and then finally, who can forget the Darth Vader scene? The epic Darth Vader scene that saw him obliterate an entire group of rebel scum, thus moving into the events of Episode Four: A New Hope. And that's all I have to say, man. That's my Rogue One uh, review. That's where it ranks on my list. It was a very... To me, it's the better of the single films. Solo was okay, but I think Rogue One is just a little bit more... Is it just a little bit better, despite its problems, in my honest opinion? But that's that's that. Coming up next on the list, Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Some people are probably raging interior in, inside themselves right now saying how could you possibly rank episode one as high as you are because a lot of the things that people hate about the film i personally don't mind like jar jar he doesn't bother me i actually kind of like jar jar and i think if they actually went through with the whole uh jar jar being the sith it would have made perfect sense you know with all the stupid antics and all that shit but in all honesty, dude, I really don't matter. It, to me, it doesn't matter. I don't know what the fuck that English was, but it doesn't matter about, to, about Jar Jar, in my opinion. Like, he doesn't bother me. A lot of other aspects of the film don't bother me, like how they explain the Force, midi-chlorians and all that shit. Like, to me, you wonder what the Force is. If that's the explanation they want to give, it doesn't bother me in the slightest, honestly. Is it funny? Is it, you know, meme-worthy? Probably, but again, it, it's not really that bad. Not as bad as people are trying to make it out to be. Uh, this uh, movie introduces probably one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars, Qui-Gon Jinn. He's not only one of my favorite characters, but he's also probably one of my one of the uh, one of the Jedi I actually really enjoy because he's kind of like a rebellious Jedi in a sense because he doesn't really do or doesn't really follow what the High Council. Um, wants 
you know, that he, he wants the Jedi Order to change, and it seems like the Order around him doesn't really want that. But nonetheless, he was a fantastic character. I really enjoyed him. Liam Neeson's a fucking great actor, regardless of whatever role he takes, but that's just my opinion. Um, Obi-Wan versus Qui-Gon, or Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon versus Maul, to me, is the second best uh, Star Wars fight in the entire, or lightsaber fight in the entire Star Wars franchise. Some people will say it's the best. I, I understand if you do think that. I personally think that uh, another one takes, you know, takes the crown on that, but... Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon versus Maul to me is just so fantastic just because of how what could have you know just how could they do it because obviously Darth Maul is the was the first you know Sith Lord or Jedi to use a double wielded lightsaber and obviously the choreography to that must have been really intense but honestly again second best fight in the entire series Battle of Naboo Another one of my favorite battles. I, I loved how the I loved the Gunkins fighting in the open field against the droid army. I really enjoyed that a lot. I love the all the shit that's happening in Feed. Uh, the star battle, the the starfighter battle up above Naboo was really cool too. When they're trying to take out the Luker Hulk battleship, it just to me it's a great battle. It has everything you can possibly want. It has, you know, the battle on land and the battle in, in space. That to me constitutes a a, a, good, a really good Star Wars battle. Now, depending on how they, depending on how they actually you know pull it off, it, it always changes. But to me, I think Episode One does a really good job of that. And you know, honestly, it, it's really it's a really just a really enjoyable movie. It's just an enjoyable movie throughout, and it just shows us a lot of things that we may have never seen before. You know, new planets. New characters, obviously, because this is the prequel trilogy. Obviously, no one's ever seen the uh, a dual, a double-bladed lightsaber before. No one's ever really understood the dark side and what that entails. No one understands how Palpatine became Palpat or em the Emperor, and that that is the beginning of you know this this episode is the beginning of that. It's really, it's just, I really think it's a good film, and I think it gets a lot of unnecessary hate, in my honest opinion. Coming up next after, after The Phantom Menace, it's The Empire Strikes Back. Now, some people might be shocked that I'm ranking it, you know, fourth overall. But, uh, I think it's... I, I, here's my reasons for it. First of all, without a doubt, it's one of the best sequels to any, any movie ever. Because originally Star Wars was not supposed to be this nine-episode thing, I think. But... If you're just comparing the original trilogy, Episode 5 is the best sequel. One of the best sequels to any movie ever. You know, there's The Godfather Part 2, and then there's this one, Episode 5. It's just really it's just really awesome. I, I just love the Battle of Hoth, again, another one of my favorite battles. I feel like something about it just is, feels a little off to me, though, as much as I do enjoy it. I don't know, I just... I wish there was a little bit more of an effort in the Starfighter department to try and wipe out these, uh, to try and wipe out these, uh, big at, -AT walkers. That's just me, though. Of course, we have the intro to Yoda, and I think this is the first time we are introduced to Emperor Palpatine in Episode 5, uh, at least to my knowledge, anyway. But yeah, those introductions were really cool. Uh, Vader and Luke's lightsaber battle. To me, is not only the best of the original trilogy. I would argue that it's in the top five. I would say it's the third best. Like I kind of, I, I said how, you know, Qui Gon and Obi Wan and Maul was the second best. Luke versus Vader one to me is number three. That's just me. Take it for what it is. But it is, it is a very good... It is probably the best lightsaber fight of the original trilogy, in my opinion. Of course, there's the twist in the end of Luke of Darth Vader being Luke Skywalker's fa father. Who would have fucking saw that coming, in my opinion? It's just, again, something really cool that they added. And a nice little twist. I mentioned in the last episode how too many twists can kill a movie. All you needed was this little, this little twist. It changes the whole dynamic of the film going into episode 6. And I just... I enjoyed it a lot. I really did. 
But despite all this, there are some parts of the movie to me that drag a lot. It just, especially after the Battle of Hoth, it just feels like, again, I mentioned in the last episode how some movies kind of need like a breather period, like after something so intense like a battle. But to me, this breather period just goes on for a little bit too long. I mean, it's like the Battle of Hoth happens, and then everything that happens after that with people cha with the Empire chasing over the, the Millennium, well, that, Millennium Falcon, Luke's training on Dagobah with Yoda, and then the introduction to Cloud City on uh, Bespin. It's just how do I? It's just it's just nothing really happens other than Han Solo kissing uh, Leia. But that's again. I don't know, I just, that that whole period of the movie, like, as enjoyable as it is, it just feels a little bit boring to me, because it drags on so long. That's just my opinion. But, nonetheless, that's where Episode 5 ranks on my list. Coming in at number 3 on the list, from worst to best, this is now, we are now entering the top 3 movies. Episode 4, A New Hope. Originally just Star Wars. But, I will say this much. If you're going to begin a epic franchise like Star Wars, that you're going to make millions upon millions upon millions of money, this is the movie to do it. If it was only just the original trilogy, Episode 4 is the perfect movie to bring you into the Star Wars universe. In my honest opinion, you have the motive of the heroes, you have the villain established, basically right away you have you know someone trying to find his way in this grand universe like luke skywalker you have a mentor and an, an aging obi-wan it's it's incredible it's just it's just an incredible beginning to the film and in my but despite that the film it feels to me like the film goes on a little bit too quickly like i kind of mentioned Episode 9, just, you know, despite it being a two and a half hour movie nearly, it just goes by too fast. I don't know the exact runtime for Episode 4, but Episode 4, if it's like so much is happening once again that, you know, so here it snaps again like in the last uh, part, you know, so much is happening that it just feels like no time has passed since you actually started watching the film. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes it can be. I mean, that's just my honest opinion. <laughs> Uh, the Death Star Battle, again, one of my favorites of the series. Probably the, if not the best, uh, space battle of the entire series. It's just, the importance of them trying to destroy the Death Star is really intense. You can tell that the characters are trying so goddamn hard to destroy this thing. And they're losing dozens of starfighters. One of these guys, uh, one of these starfighter pilots just happens to be Luke's best friend in the film. Biggs, who I guess they grew up together on Tatooine, but for some reason they mentioned this guy Biggs a few times, and it seems to me, my honest opinion, that the relationship between Biggs and Luke is never really fully explored to the power that it could have been, because again, I will mention this again like I did last time, the deleted scenes of the film kind of add a lot more than one would think. Now, I understand why deleted scenes are necessary because the film would run too long, but in this case, the relationship between Luke and Biggs would have been really cool to explore just a little bit so that Biggs' death feels a little bit more impactful to the film than just Luke staring off into space a little bit upset that his boy just died. That's just my honest opinion. But nonetheless, episode four is where it is on the list. Number two, and we're down to two movies now, folks. Number two for me as the as the best Star Wars movie that I've watched, my favorite on my favorites list. Episode six, Return of the Jedi. Let me say this: this some people will say that the Rise of Skywalker is the true ending to Star Wars. But honestly, I think that's a load of shit for how many inaccuracies are in the film. As good as it was, and as enjoyable as it is, Episode 6 to me, Return of the Jedi, is the true ending to the Star Wars, uh, you know, to the Star Wars story. That's just my opinion, because it just seems like it has a little bit of everything. 
you know, you have Anakin coming back, his redemption, similar to like Ben, but I think it was a little bit more impactful than uh, Kylo, aka Ben Solo's in, you know, The Rise of Skywalker. It has an epic battle on Endor, you know, again, one of my top battles of the franchise. A uh, lot of, a lot of deaths in this movie. There's a lot of people that die in this movie that are considered more or less to be key characters within the universe of Star Wars. Jabba, Vader, Emperor Palpatine, etc. The only thing that bothers me about this film, or one of the only things that bothers me, is uh, the Ewoks. As adorable as they are, and I really do mean this, they're adorable, it's incredibly unrealistic that an entire tribe of Ewoks mixed with more or less a couple of, um, you know, a couple of rebels beats, you know, beats an entire garrison, it seems, of, of stormtroopers. But while this is happening, we have, again, one of the best space battles in the history of, fran of the franchise, in my opinion, being the Death Star 2 battle, which, it, it's really awesome. I think this, to me, is one of the blue... I, I mentioned this a couple times. This, to me, is one of the blueprints of how to do a space battle in a, you know, space-esque fr and sci-fi franchise, right? That's just me. It was, a, it was a really fucking awesome. You have... I, I can't even describe to you. You just have everything going right, then all of a sudden everything is going wrong, and then the good guys win in the end. Vader versus Luke 2. Again, it's the, to me it's the second best lightsaber fight of the original trilogy, but I don't think it's the best lightsaber fight of the act of all time. You know, it's definitely the second best of the original trilogy with how emotional it gets at times, especially when Darth Vader is you know, talking about Leia being, you know, Luke's sister and all that shit. And uh, obviously his daughter. It, 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 that shit got a little intense during during that time. In my opinion, Vader's sacrifice and his death is, to me, the saddest death in Star Wars. Because here you are, a, a guy who's introduced, you know, in Episode 1, Anakin Skywalker. You see his journey throughout the training to be a Jedi eventually turning to the dark side and you know he does all these horrific things and then he comes back his son brings him back to the light and when he says Luke take off my mask you know so I can see with my own eyes and he says son you saved me I'm not gonna lie I saw that for the first time I started to cry this is years ago but I saw that for the first time I teared up a little bit man the bond between father and son, that's something special, let me tell you. Regardless, that's just... It, it's a very in intense moment for me. And, you know, again... Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Seeing, uh... Oh yeah, this is, this is the last bullet point on this. Basically, again, another reason why I think that this is the true conclusion to Star Wars is you see Anakin, aka Vader, Obi-Wan, Yoda, and they're all Force Ghosts. And they're all looking upon Luke as the rebels are cel celebrating on Endor with the Ewok tribe, and it's just—it's just really satisfying. It's a really satisfying ending to the movie, and a really satisfying ending to me of you know the original trilogy and just overall Star Wars. Because to me, the sequel trilogy is not so much a sequel trilogy as it is the aftermath of everything happening after Re Return of the Jedi. That's just me. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, we have ranked every single film except this one. And there's one film I have yet to mention that is my favorite Star Wars film of all time. Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Kind of similar to, you know, you know, actually not so similar, but I was going to say along the lines of, you know how the Empire Strikes Back is like the bad guy is coming back? This is like the Empire Strikes Back, but like a lot more fucked up. That's how I consider this film to be. Let's begin, shall we, as to why I love this movie so much. It's the best movie of the prequels. By far. There's no doubt about that at all. The overall tone of the movie is darker than what many would consider a Star Wars film to be. This is by far, I think, in my opinion, the darkest of the entire movie franchise. Just with everything going on in the film. 
there's nothing but wall-to-wall -wall action from the opening sequence when the Battle of Coruscant's going on to Battle of Kashyyyk, the Battle of Utapau, Order 66, the Jedi, the remains of the Jedi fighting back to find Anakin and finding out Anakin's the reason behind all of this, the Sidious uh, fighting off all the Jedi, uh, Anakin versus Obi-Wan in, in this epic lightsaber duel on Mustafar. It's insane. It's really fucking insane. There's nothing but wall-to-wall -wall action, and it just keeps you entertained throughout. If you're an action purist like I am, who like loves watching act action sequences, this is the film. For me. On it, for, or for you, even. But to me, I love it for that reason. And of course, I think the best, one of the more interesting parts is seeing Anakin's descent into the dark side. Because in episode 2, you kind of see him being a little bit of a bitch. In episode 3, you get that a little bit too with him complaining that he's, you know, on the Jedi Council, but he's not a, he hasn't been granted the rank of Master. You kind of understand that part, but you kind of see Anakin for the most part sort of being a little bit more mature. But, you know, you know, you never really know with Hayden Christensen's acting. Again, I can not I can only bash the guy for his portrayal of Anakin. I can't really bash him for any other movie project he, he's done in the past. But, my opinion, his work as Anakin could have been much better, uh, in all honesty. But again, his descent to the dark side, all because he wanted to save the love of his life and his wife, Padme, and hopefully save their children. All be, it, it, it makes sense. I mean, wouldn't you want to do anything you could to protect someone you love? It's it's a good it's a good reasoning, in my honest opinion. How he goes about it, a little bit a uh, little bit crazy. But again, another reason why I like this movie is because to me, the Clone Wars era technology is to me where Star Wars technology really peaks, because everything looks so cool. The Starfighters look cool, the Star Destroyers look cool, the, the big capital ships look cool. And then, you, like, the Blasters look cool. And then you get to the original trilogy, and it's like, what happened? It seems like Star Wars technology regressed. Then you get to the, uh... And then you get to the sequel trilogy. Star Wars technology hasn't really been any different. It seems like it's stagnant. To me, the prequel era is, and this movie in particular, shows off Star Wars' best technology. That's just me. Honest opinion. Order 66 montage. Um, very sad. I like, uh, there's a lot of Jedi that die in this that I really like. You know, Plo Koon, obviously if you watch the, the uh, Star Wars, Clone Wars TV show. Um, Kaidi Mundi. I like that crazy, I like that big-headed fucking guy. He, he, I, it's a shame that he got had to die, too. And, uh, what else? A couple other Jedi there. And it's just really sad, man. I wish it could have been a little sadder, but, you know, it's still a, a crazy moment in Star Wars, for lack of better terms. And, uh, finally, Anakin vs. Obi-Wan. The greatest Star Wars fight in the history of Star Wars franchise. That's that. There I said it. Nothing you can do to change my mind. There's nothing, there's everything about this fight is just pure fucking awesomeness. A little bit choreographed, I will say, if you're looking at this from a, you know, critic perspective, but it's really fucking good. And it's, I like that it's a, a, a planet-wide fight. And that's where I, and that's it, man. That's pretty much it for me. One more time, let's go over from the very worst to the very best on my favorite Star Wars movies list. Again, I apologize for this video being so goddamn long, but shit happens. Anyway, episode two, Attack of the Clones, worst movie. Clone Wars animated film. Episode eight, The Last Jedi. Episode seven, The Force Awakens. Episode nine, The Rise of Skywalker. Solo, Rogue One. Episode one, The Phantom Menace. Episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. Episode four, A New Hope. Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. And finally, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for joining me on this very intense journey. Again, 
I'm not trying to start World War III in the comments with this ranking of movies. I would like some intelligent discussion to be had. Maybe give me your own personal list of the best to worst Star Wars films in your honest opinion. I would really enjoy that. I'd like to see why you rank other films above others. Maybe tell me why my reasoning is a little, a little bit off. Or maybe tell me something in my an an analyzing of these films that I might have missed. By all means, I, I encourage a, a uh, intelligent discussion. That being said, thank you for joining me in this undertaking. I hope you all enjoyed. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have a great day. Peace out.